hallelujah i want you to know that faith is a mystery when we talk about faith being a mystery we mean you cannot explain you cannot explain faith but yet you can see the results of faith did you get what i said in in, in john 9 verse 21 you know the story of uh, the guy who was born blind and the disciple asked jesus what did the mother or the father do that this guy became blind and jesus said god allowed this for his name to be glorified and later this guy encountered jesus and got healed and so it became a mystery that faith operation became a mystery and in john chapter 9 verse 21 you see when they were asking well is it not they were asking is this where's my secretary read very fast is this is this not the guy who was blind to them it was shocking you see you after this season after today they will ask you is it not the brother who was drinking is it not the sister who was single it, uh, your amen is not good yes they will ask you is it not the brother who was struggling because what they will be seeing in your life will be quite opposite of what they knew you of they will not be able to explain what happened because faith will be in operation and in verse 20, 26 the bible says and the mother herself said oh uh, sure this is my son oh, but i don't know what happened to him there are people who will see you after today and also we don't know what happened to that sister we don't know how she got that car we don't know how she got married though. we don't know how she built that house we don't know how she traveled abroad i'm speaking to somebody today that will be the testimony you will encounter you will become a mystery in the name of jesus so faith is a mystery faith is a mystery in the sense that you are not aware when the process is happening see something when somebody is healed somebody who could not walk is healed do you see what is going on you don't see what is going on you only see when the person rises up and begins to uh, walk so you don't know the, you you don't you you can't explain the operation you are unaware yes you are unaware so faith is a mystery because it, 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 because you are unaware of the process in john chapter 3 verse 8 the bible says, he that is born of the spirit is like a wind you don't know where what where he's coming from and where what he's going so you can't explain the proce uh, process but you can feel the wind you don't know where the wind is coming from but you can what? feel the wind so you can feel the impact but you don't know what is going on yeah me sir the things god will be doing in your life from this day in this season you will not be able to explain it all you will say is this is the finger of god hey this is the work of god this is the hand of god this is the marvelous grace of god i prophesy this season may god be doing things for you without your knowledge may god be manifesting grace in your dimension in your direction in the name of jesus see something in mark 16 verse 3 and 4 give me that scripture the bible says early in the morning mark 16 verse 3 and 4 Martha, Mary and, uh, uh, and, and, and this woman they came to the tomb of Jesus I said faith is a mystery because you don't know what is you don't know you don't know how it is taking place you only see what it's just like there are people who come to the restaurant to eat they don't know how they cook the food they just make the food that how faith is you don't that between that time of getting the raw food and cooking to bringing it to the restaurant you don't know what's going on. you don't only find the food that how faith is that why it's a mystery and so see it says and they said among themselves who shall rule away the stone from the tomb of the sepulchre next verse see something and when they looked they saw that the stone was rolled away for it was very great they were looking at the stone the tomb of jesus said hey who will rule away this stone how we enter and why they were looking before they know the stone was no longer there again they cannot explain the time where stone was there and the time where stone is not there they can't understand the process you see you and where you will have your house you and where you have your, your your home you and where you have your visa you and where you enter that testimony you will not be able to explain that season hey what i'm saying is that god will take you from
from Egypt, you will not go through the wilderness. From Egypt, you will appear in the promised land. That's what I'm talking ah, 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 You didn't get what I'm saying. When we talk about faith, faith is a, an experience where there is no gap between you, you and your testimony. Where there is, where from the from Egyptian land, you don't need to go through 40, 40 days of wilderness or 40 years of wilderness. From the promised land, you skip over the wilderness and appear in the promised land. You can't explain the promise the process. You can't explain the process. Yeah, me, I'm prophesying to you in the name that is above every other name. God is going to do mighty things in your life. Things that you will not be able to understand is happening. Only that you will just see that it has happened. He said they were looking at the tomb and saying, Who will open this? Uh, you know, who will open this? Clear the way for us to enter. And why before their own eyes? <laughs> Things are changed. Things are changed. And why you look at your poverty before you know you see yourself in riches? <laughs> why you look at, your, uh, at yourself single before you know you are carrying five children in somebody's house? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, 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 you didn't even get what I'm saying. Why you are saying, God, where will my own husband come before you know? You can't explain before you know you are sleeping behind somebody's bed. Sign and seal. You can't explain it. I decree. You will enjoy the profit of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Faith is a mystery. Because with faith. With faith. Uh, faith is a mystery. And if faith is a mystery. Then you make you, it makes you who have faith. Or you the believer also a mystery. It, 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 in John 9 verse 19 see something the, the people marveled they were shocked the man who believed in Jesus who had faith in Jesus was healed they were shocked which kind of a man is this what's going on are you a human being it made him a mystery in other words you become a sign and a wonder you become something that cannot be studied Hey. something that cannot be studied like now you cannot draw air but I can draw a building plan I can draw a story building I can draw a car but can you draw air you cannot draw air but you can feel the air air produces energy wind turbines you hear me sir you will be a mystery in Isaiah 8 verse 18 the Bible says I and the children whom the Lord will give we are for signs and for wonders in Acts chapter 3 verse 12 the Bible says, when they saw the man that was here at the beautiful gate, everybody was, who, everybody's eyes were cast on Peter. The Bible says, and they marveled. They marveled. And Peter said, why are you looking at us as if we by our power have done this? In other words, when you begin to walk in faith, people see you and marvel. Which kind of person is this? Is this a human being? Sister, how do you do it? How did you marry? How do you how did you do it? Somebody met me those a day I was passing Mama after she we were driving somewhere. Who knew me very many years back? I was still a very young man in ministry. He said, Collins. Mama is a witness. Collins. Collins. The return. Now you faith makes you a mystery. There's somebody here today. The next time people who knew you will see you. <laughs> people who look down on you, look down on your business, look down on your children, look down on your life. The next time they will see you, something about you will shock them. Ah, that amen is not good. I said something about you will shock them. Check any man walking in faith. People who see them the second time, they never see them the same. And that's why you should walk in faith this season. One reason that the people who undermine you, they should see you in another level. <laughs> people who look down on you. Who look down on you. There's something God is doing this season. By the operation of your faith. 
that will make you a mystery they will not be able to know you they will, they will see you and say hey sister are you because only the glory that will be coming out of your life only the beauty and the shining the handsomeness and the glory and splendor that they will be see emanating from you only the sweet smelling sabots that will be coming out of you now you be this oh yes now me now me now me now me life is turn by turn life is turn by turn life is turn by turn hear me and hear me child of god faith is a mystery faith is a mystery and the reason why faith is a mystery is because you believe in the unseen i can believe in you that you, you will help me my because i'm seeing you but when it comes to faith you are believing in things that you don't see ah yeah 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 you believe in a god you don't see with physical eye you believe in things that you don't see physically that joy shall live by faith and not by sight so faith is oh, what you believe in the unseen and so that's the reason why faith is a mystery something that cannot be explained because your feet you are putting faith in something you are not seeing with physical eyes you are not seeing with physical eyes in john 20 verse 29 jesus spoke to uh, this our brother called um, uh, thomas he said thomas you have seen and you have what believe but blessed is he that what have not seen but yet what believe have not seen but yet believe in hebrews 11 verse 7 the bible says by faith by faith noah having reverence and fear for god believe god oh my god have you not seen give me that scripture hebrews 11 7 so the reason why faith is a mystery is that you is because you believe in something that you have not seen in somebody you have not seen yes hebrews chapter 11 7. hebrews 11 verse 7 yes by faith no by, by faith, faith noah by faith noah being one of god of the things not seen as yet are you getting noah did not see it but he believed can you believe this season that your marriage will happen even if you have not seen a man oh somebody can go i'm saying can you believe that you can travel even when you, have, you don't yet have a passport ah can you believe that you can build a house even when you have not yet have a, a land that is faith that is faith he said noah believed even not yet seen so the reason why faith is a mystery is because you believe in the unseen you believe in the unseen he said by faith noah being want of god of things not seen as yet yes moved with fear prepared and what and up to the to the saving of his house so you see he had not he did not need any proof in order to believe what he had so the reason give me first peter 1 verse 8 the reason why faith is a mystery is because you are believing in god you are believing in somebody you are believing in something that you are not seeing so can you believe that you will open a boutique this season even when you don't have capital that is faith that's faith brother oh yes <laughs> oh yes but in the eyes of the natural man such a thing is foolishness imagine you are going to market now to buy a suit for your husband when you are still single you say sister network has started shaking now or oh, you don't you are not even yet married you don't have any man around you and yet you are going to mother care to buy baby things buy bath and buy everything like someone who, who is going to give birth in two months time those see you are as foolish because faith the operations of faith are quite opposite to what the, the to, 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 to the laws of this realm they are laws of of faith and they are which are laws of the spirit they are also laws of the natural which are quite opposite in first peter chapter 1 verse 8 he says whom haven't not seen i see what i'm saying 
He said, Whom haven't not seen yet what? Ye love in whom? Though now ye see him not. Are you get what I'm saying? Why faith is a mystery? You are believing somebody, you are believing something you have not had. You have not seen. Even now ye see him not, yet believing. Are you getting what I'm, are you getting? Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. See verse 9. Yes. See something. Believing and receiving the end of your word. Faith. faith. Someone say faith. faith. Someone say faith. He said the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So we are seeing Paul uh, Peter here talking, writing to the church scattered all over Galatia. Say, you know, you are put yes, it's a mystery. You are putting your faith in somebody. This is what we are talking about. Some of you have never seen him. You are here, you believe in Jesus now. But have you ever seen him physically? But do you trust in him? Do you believe him? That's why it's a mystery. That's why some people now when they see you who say did they are church team on that now crazy worried and so because you are putting your faith in somebody you have not seen physically at least if they put their faith in grandmaster they will go there in their night and not see grandmaster but you have you seen that jesus physically no but do you believe in him yes that's why they see faith as foolishness when you are operating in faith in faith people see you as being foolish <laughs> In what silence them now is when the results of faith begin to manifest. The, now we are going to look on a topic called the proofs of faith. When they begin to see the proofs of your faith now, the evidences of your faith, the, the products and outcome of your faith, say, eh, that thing they work. Oh. That thing they work. You know when they gathered in the upper room and began to speak in tongues, they say these people are drunk of wine now. Huh? Because they were talking like mad people. Then later when the tongues switch gear and they began to hear them speak in their language, in their languages they were shocked in acts chapter 2 now and verse 37 they came to peter and said brethren what shall we do they said people were laughing at them and peter said repent here be converted and be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the holy holy spirit they are still laughing at you because they have not yet seen the result of your faith don't let them discourage the faith don't let the faith give birth to your testimony your testimony and te will be a testament of your faith and it is that testimony that will convict them to put that same faith you have in the same person they cannot see also that jesus christ don't let them discourage your faith don't let them discourage your faith i want to conclude with this but what is faith oh my god this man believe god say i dare to believe say i dare to believe what is faith number one faith is man putting his total trust in god and underline that word total put it in capital letter i don't mean partial trust there are people who trust a, who trust god in a measure ah, you're not getting what i'm saying who trust god in a measure let me quote an example there was a time a man jesus visited the house of a man arm robbers came in and Jesus was in the parlor. They gave Jesus. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a narrative story. Jesus pillow to sleep in the parlor. Uh, did not allow him to enter the room. And so when armed robbers came to break in in the parlor, Jesus arrested them. And so the people slept well. The next day, the armed robbers came. They did not enter through the parlor. They parked in the back door. They success, successfully enter a room and did disaster. The people got up in the morning and said, Jesus, how can you be here and have robbers enter this room? And Joker said, I was only in the parlor. I didn't have access to the room. So there are people who give Jesus parlor and say, you know what? Don't enter this room. Don't enter this room. Don't enter this room. But when you say, Jesus, this house is your house my money is your money my time is your time my marriage is your marriage my children are your children my career is a career and you yield all to him you are walking in faith many christians today are not walking in faith or they are walking in partial faith because they give a portion of their life to him and keep back it's just like nanias and Safira. the reason why they died is because but their faith was not complete and faith is not faith if it is not total 
So faith is man putting his total trust in the Lord. In Mark 11 verse 22. Mark 11 verse 22. Jesus spoke to them. He said, believe in God. Trust in God. And Jesus spoke to them. Say what? Where's Miranda? Get that mic. That other woman is going fast. And Jesus said, Jesus spoke to them and said what? Have what? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. So faith is total trust in him. Say Lord I trust you this season. Uh, lift up your hands somebody. Say Jesus I put my total trust in you. I trust you for my finances. I trust you for my peace. I trust you for my security. I trust you for my children. I trust you for my marriage. I trust you for my future. Say I trust you for my for my business. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the good news is that he never disappoints. Nya <laughs> can disappoint you. Your wife can disappoint you. Your husband can disappoint you. But he never disappoint them that trust in him. I prophesy. Whatever you are trusting God this season. Because he never fails. He never sleeps nor slumber. This season you will see the fruit of your faith. You will see the... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You will see the, the proofs of your faith. In the name of Jesus. What is faith? Faith is man put his total trust on God. Number two. Faith is trusting in the ability of God. Having this confidence that God can do it. That is faith. In Daniel chapter 3 verse 17. When Nebuchadnezzar had arrested Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They said king we are not careful to think on this matter. But one thing we know we are convinced and persuaded of. Is that our God is able. Our God is able. Able they talk of ability. God can do it. Someone said my God can do it. Say my God can do it. And I know he will do it. I want you to reply those doubts. Reply those villagers. That have been speaking in your ear. Say my God can do it. And I know he will do it. Hallelujah. And Shetan Meshach and Abednego say. Our God is able. He's able to deliver us from your hands. O king. He can is able. Able, they talk about ability. So faith is what? Trusting in the ability of God. In 2 Kings verse 1 verse 12, a time, in 1 Kings chapter 1 verse 12, a time came, soldiers came, 50, to arrest this our brother, Elijah. And Elijah said, if I be a man of God, you know what? I believe in what the God I serve can do. If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. I will read the letter part, part B. The Bible says, and fire came down. <laughs> fire will fall. It will fall. It will fall. I say fire is falling. On strange altars. Enemies of your destiny. Enemies of your prophecy. If you believe, somebody shout amen. What is faith? What is faith? Number three, faith is being perfectly sure in the promises of God. Romans 4 verse 19 to 21. Be perfectly sure. In other words, I'm sure that what God has said in his word, I'm sure that it is true. I'm sure that what God has promised me from scripture and what I saw in the vision, that good thing I saw, saw in the dream, I sh I'm sure it will surely come to pass. That is faith. Being persuaded, being perfectly sure in the promise of God. What is a promise? A promise is a pronouncement made over you by God with respect to a love He has for you. And some of the promises is, is you will be the head and not the tail, you'll be the first and not the last, you will live and not die. He said, in Abraham and his seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> Another promise that a thousand shall fall at your side. And ten thousand at your right hand. He shall not come near you. 
So when we talk about promises of God, we mean prophetic utterances that God has made over your life. Either from the word of God, the letter, or through an anointed verse, a prophet. Or through visionary impartation. Maybe you, you saw a promise in a dream. God showed you how great you will be. Believe it that it will surely come to pass. God showed you in your dream how you are doing your marriage. Believe it that it will surely come to pass. God showed you in a dream how you are taking care of your children. Believe it how you I believe that it will surely come to pass. God show in a dream how your children became great. Believe it. That is faith. Believing the promise of God. Having sureness or surety. Perfect sureness or surety in the promises of God. Having this confidence that God cannot lie. He's not a man that should lie. That which he has said, he will surely make it come to pass. He may delay, he may tarry, but he will surely manifest. Because God is not a man. That is faith. And so in Romans 4 verse, verse 4. Uh, Paul uh, explaining to the Roman church the faith of uh, Abraham. He said Abraham. God promised him that he will be a father of many nations. And even after 25 years. This prophecy had not come to pass. He said this is the faith Abraham had. That even at that point where he was old striking in age. And the wife Sarah. Now far past the stage of menopause. Abraham did still not doubt what God has said. He still had the faith, persuaded. He still had the confidence, the faith that God cannot lie. That God was willing and able to do his promise he had made unto him. He said, and God counted it for righteousness. And said, so he received, oh, give me verse 21. He said, and he received that which the Lord had promised him. I refuse to doubt the Lord. That good thing God spoke about SCM. My eyes are on it. We will see it manifest. That good thing God, that good thing God spoke about your home. That good thing God spoke about your parents. That good thing God spoke about your life. I tell you, sister, don't doubt it. God cannot lie; it will come to pass. It may delay, it may tarry, but it will be, it will surely manifest. He said, "I'm being fully persuaded that what He had promised, He was able also to perform it." That is it. My God is able to. I don't know your own God, but my God. It may not have happened now. It has not happened but in the physical. But one thing I know in the spiritual has already, has already happened. God is not waiting for the right atmosphere for it to manifest here. So the fact that it has not yet happened here does not mean it has not happened in the realm of God. Hey! He said, as it is in, uh, 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 in heaven, so it is where? On earth. So faith is operation in the heavenlies with time it was expressed in the physical on the earth realm it has been done for somebody that good thing you are believing god for that good thing god promised you that good thing god showed you that good thing god in, uh, inspired you of that global business i say in the name of jesus that promise that vision that that that, that dream will manifest number four lastly what is faith faith is total reliance in the will of the spirit total reliance in the will of the spirit romans 8 verse 14 he says, as many as are led by the spirit they are the sons of god john 5 verse 30 john 5 verse 30 so faith is total reliance i rely on you i rely on you total reliance on the will of the spirit he said i by myself i can do nothing by my own self he said i can of my own self do what nothing as i hear i judge and my judgment is just because i seek not my own will you know that what i'm seeking his own will that is faith you are you are not living life anyhow your life is in alignment to his will that is faith it says i cannot mouse i seek not my will own will but the will of the father which had sent me so we know that you are walking in faith or walking in the spirit because walking in faith and walking in the spirit are the same thing if you are living your life according to the tenets of scriptures you are living your life according to the prescriptions of god you are living your life according to the manual of the spirit you are, not, you are living based on what the, the voice of the spirit so that is faith so the holy ghost can tell you now go and drop everything everything your house go and dash somebody 
that is faith. If he is the one that spoke it, you are walking in faith. But the kind of Messiah can I? A man came to Jesus and said, Master, you know what? I want to what? I want to follow you. And Jesus said, Go and say everything you have. Eh? Jesus wanted to inject faith into him. He said, Go. Because you are giving to the poor. Jesus never needed it. But Jesus, in that action, wanted to inject what? Faith to align him to his will. He said, Go and say everything you have and give it to the poor. And come carry your cross and follow me. Come, my will is that you carry a cross. The Bible says the same man who came with fire in his bones. But in, have you some people who enter church? Huh? Face Sunday, you know that one uh, this one is this one is on fire for God. By Tuesday, you don't see the person in church. Now we used to go to the place of prayer and see some brothers who just come in the place where we are praying, some of we are taking it. <laughs> we are still build our plan for prayer and counting the cost to do enter hey whoa, why 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 well, just look at them let's see after 45 minutes <laughs> and then maybe we have that two hours this is the guy you want to see somewhere the bible says the rest is not for the swift faith is not for the swift <laughs> And people who come here, hey, they share testimony, say, Oh, celebrate the grace of my father. And I'm just sitting there and say, You are calling that thing because you have not gone through trial. We know what I really celebrate that you have faith. But we have challenged the church and you are still in that church. So, oh, 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 oh the grace is too much. <laughs> when I do all that thing, and someone like me who is deep in scripture, I say, Just wait, let's have one on misunderstanding in church. Whether you still be in church. They will know whether you really have faith in that grace. So faith is align yourself to the will of the Spirit. He said, I can by my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. In this season, if you will see the mighty, marvelous works of faith, yield yourself to God. The Bible says, submit yourself to the, Lord, the mighty hand of, of, the, of God. You yourself. Lord, I, I don't want to do it by myself. I, yes, I have ideas. But what are you saying? Yes, I, I, I know I can. I, I'm a beautiful lady. I know I can get any man to marry me. But Lord, what is your will? Yes, I know I have the grace to gather any crowd I want. I have the prophetic grace. But Lord, what is your will? Yes, I have the charisma to get any money we need for our project, church project. But Lord, what is a will? When you, when you, you, you constrain yourself to walk in the flow of God's spirit, the pattern of God's spirit, you are walking in faith. And I conclude this most time when you are doing so, the people around you will see you being foolish. Because you can't walk in faith and be normal. Did you get what I said? Because the moment you begin to walk in faith, you are not in this realm. And there are two people who are always not in this realm. Either a spiritual man or a madman. You are not getting what I'm saying. So, a spiritual man is a CS me twins to a madman. So, when you are operating in faith, people will see you being foolish. But when you are walking is weird. Imagine you now. You went to school, Dr. Pastor Poe Nature, my father. You went to school, a trained medical doctor, and God said, drop medical doctor and be a pastor. In the eyes of a whole medical doctor, in the eyes of if the family is not in God, they will see this guy as possessed. Huh? But if the person is trying to follow the will, the will of God. There are people who have met some men of God. And the Holy Spirit told them that everything you have in your pocket, wipe it and give them. And you are saying, God, Mr. Seba, I need a move. And maybe you are even owing rent. And God said, the small one you are trying to gather, the one more rent, finish and give it up. It looks very foolish. Because when you are walking in faith, most times they will think that you are possessed of the spirit of Beelzebub. 
<laughs> you know when Jesus was operating in faith, they were calling him what? By his his potential spirit of what? Bezebub. This man is mad. It's another place they will talk about Paul. Paul was talking before King Agrippas. And uh, 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 somebody said this man is is what? Is mad of a what? Of too much learning. Another place they say he was drunk of wine. Have you seen people who are talking sense and they see you like Christmas? Huh? Don't check now like this. That means, yes, I'm a trained, like, I'm a lecturer, I'm a, psych a educational psychologist. I go now to primary school and I'm talking about psychoanalysis. Huh? I'm talking about psycho uh, psychoperatetic interventions. And I'm talking about self perception. Huh? I'm talking about John Bobby's theory, the theory of attachment. A lot of a lot in that class in class one will look at me. You don't go, you don't go, you don't go. But am I really mad? Am I really mad? But am I seen as a madman? Why am I seen as a, ma a madman? I'm operating in a higher realm. So the reason why people ah, you understand what I'm saying? The reason why people who, who see you walking in faith see you as a madman because you are somewhere up here. And they are down there in the spirit so when they mature in faith and then they jump up and come to your stage say oh that way paul when paul had come to faith he said oh i labored I, I fought against the church knowing that i was fighting a just a just cost killing christians and terrorizing churches when he came to that light to that faith he said oh now i know how wretched and foolish i've been so you see the people who are who are see you as mad operating faith because they have not matured to your height as they grow in the word of god and begin to have the same experience you have the one they reach where you are you say oh wow so you used to see people speaking in tongues now and you are laughing now eh? you pass somewhere you see one church you're making cannibal shut up they see them, see them, see them. Much room churches. Now like that, you know the one disturbing the landlord. Every night, the landlord is complaining. Man no go sleep again for the house. Man no go sleep again for this house. It's the same you do was laughing when you were seeing people speaking in tongues. And that's why when they were crucifying Jesus, Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them. They were operating at the level they didn't know. For they don't know what they do. That's why he, didn't, he did not count it on them. Because they were ignorant. They are not yet matured in faith. The same people, when they saw his resurrection, the same people who said crucify him, they gave their life to him. That is because they are now matured by encounter. And that which they are saying. I pray for you today. You will become a mystery. As you walk in faith. Can you celebrate the word of God? Have you learned something, somebody? Sorry, I've been very brief, but I believe you learned.